All right, guys, this will be church this evening. I'm looking forward to it. Got something different. Like I said, not going to do uh, um, in anything in the Revelation study because I really would rather be in person to do that so you can ask questions. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, so what I've got for you is a little bit of a uh, like a devotional type thing. I think it applies to our current situation. Uh, but before I get there, keep Noah lifted up. Uh, him and Sheila both, uh, they're both, you know, still still recovering. Noah isn't doing any worse. Uh, said that, that he's not, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of stabilized where he's at. Of course, he still needs to improve. It's going to be a long road. So y'all pray for him. Pray for Sister Janice. I don't know. Um, I have not heard anything else about her. Uh, so y'all keep her lifted up. Pray for Emily Egan. Uh, she had surgery today and, and she's recovering. She's doing well though. I didn't even know she was going to have surgery, uh, but but she's doing well. Uh, Grayson Jenkins, who I've been requesting prayer for, I don't know if I told the church yet or not, but he's cancer free. His skin came back perfect, so that's great. And then uh, at the same time that that happened, the Grayson's dad, the, the guy that I work with, uh, found out that his wife has a, a cousin or a nephew. I, I couldn't remember which one he said. Uh, he's five years old. And uh, was complaining of a headache, went to bed with his parents, got up the next morning, they took him to the doctor, they did a CAT scan, and found out that uh, he's got a malignant tumor on his brain. This five-year-old's got six to nine months to live. So pray for that family. And uh, just uh, keep my dad's church in your prayers. Pray for my brother. And uh, as he kind of helps them out there. And uh, pray for uh, Carmen's brother. He's got COVID. Keep him lifted up. Uh, pray for Brother Lawrence's family. Those are th th those requests that are made every week. Please, please remember those. Um, I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to get into it. So, uh, uh, just real quick, I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for looking after us and taking care of us. And uh, God blessed us all this week. I just pray, God, you take your word. <clears throat> And you'd use it uh, for your honor and glory. Lord, we love you and we thank you we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, real quick. Uh, Ezra chapter 4. Uh, I just want to talk real quick about this because we're living in a time where it seems like it's really easy to be discouraged and it's really easy to find trouble. Uh, it's really easy to feel weak and, and helpless and powerless. And um, in Ezra chapter 4, what you have is, is in, in the book of Ezra, they've all come back together. Uh, and they have... <coughs> excuse me. They have uh, gotten back together and, and they're going to build the temple. And so they're, they're trying their best to get this temple built. And uh, the whole time that they, you know, they're excited about it. They're looking forward to it. It's, it's a big deal. It's, you know, they're back uh, where the temple's supposed to be. They're laying the foundation. They're getting into it. You know, they, they've got folks in order. Everything's, it's just falling into place. God has blessed them. And in Ezra chapter 4, verse 4, or in, in, in Ezra chapter 4, uh, there's some folks that came to him and said, look, uh, and, and they, they were just trying to mess him up. They said, we serve your God. We served your God a long time ago. Let us help you. And the people say, no, you didn't serve our God. You're not going to help us. And then this is what happens in Ezra 4, 4. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. In verse 5, it says, and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until Darius, king of Persia. Uh, these people, they came in there and they were like, you know what? Uh, if you're not going to let us help you, if, if you're not going to give us a hand in this, uh, or you know, let us have a hand in this, then we're going to do what we can do to mess you up. And the Bible says that they weakened the hands of the people of Judah. And not only do they weaken the hands of the people of Judah, but they um, they they troubled the building. I don't know what they did. I don't, I don't know if it was a thing where they they showed up and just hassled them. I don't know. If they broke supply lines, I don't know what they did. I just know that it says they troubled them uh, in the building. And then it says they had counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, 
whenever I read that, I thought about where we are in the church, and I thought about what's going on in in the world today, and about how that we have to respond, and and what it's like to be a Christian right now. Honestly, uh, it's not easy. It's not, uh, you know, my my job isn't necessarily fun at all. Uh, uh, you know, trying to figure out what's safe, what's good, what's not, what's wrong. You know, and. Uh, it's it just gets really hard and it gets really frustrating gets really discouraging and I know it's frustrating and discouraging and hard for you 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 know you you want to come to church you want to get in there you want to sing you want to praise you want to worship and then yet at the same time we want to be safe and cautious and prudent and wise and um, so I was just reading this and I thought man that sounds just like you know our hands are weak and it seems like we're just troubled in the building and what's up and I, I got to thinking what that must have felt like so I was thinking about it, and I wrote down three things. Number one, it was discouraging. You better believe that these people who were so excited in Ezra chapter 1 and Ezra chapter 2, as the work began to be getting done, must have gotten very discouraged as every day they showed up to work, and there was some knothead somewhere trying their best to cause them trouble. You can bet it was discouraging. I don't like being discouraged. Um... I, you know, I, I tell you guys all the time, I get kind of grumpy and fussy and stuff like that. But I hate being I, I hate being discouraged. I don't like it. Uh, I mean, especially if it's something that, that has merit and it's hard to do and, and there's nothing uh, that's worth doing that's easy, it seems like. These guys are building the temple and they're constantly getting just, just trouble on every side. You better believe it was discouraging. Could you imagine showing up to work? every day knowing this is god's will knowing this is what god wants knowing god worked all this out and the whole time there's some knucklehead just talking about you and fussing about you trying to mess you up it had to be discouraging but not only was it discouraging it was disheartening you know it's it's one thing to be discouraged and and you can be discouraged and, and still go on but when you're disheartened it's like it takes the fight out of you um you ever seen two guys box, you know, and, and, and in, in, in the beginning, you know, one of them is kind of dominating and I'm not even talking about Rocky type stuff. I'm just talking about one of them is kind of dominating and, and you can kind of tell the other guy's discouraged, you know, like he's, he's just, you, know, you can tell maybe he was overconfident going in or maybe he doesn't feel like he has a, the, the, the training he needs. But then as the fight wears on, that discouragement turns into disheartening, d- disheartenment or disheartening. This guy goes from being like, well, you know, I'm discouraged, but I can still kind of hold my own to, he just kind of gives up. Or, you know, even a ball game. You ever watched a ball game where a team starts out and, you know, it's a a 10-point lead, you know, starting out. And then but by the end of the game, you know, at, at the beginning, they're discouraged. By the end of the game, that 10-point lead turned into a 50-point lead. And that other team is just, they're just disheartened. They don't even feel like playing anymore. And you can bet that these people spent their mornings thinking, you know, maybe not at first, maybe not the first time it happened, maybe not the second, maybe not the 15th, but maybe around the, you know, 50th or the 60th or even the 100th time, you know, that they show up to work and these people are there causing trouble on their way to the job site. People are catcalling them on the way, you know, as they're there, people are fussing. And maybe they got disheartened. Maybe they just got to the point where they were like, you know what, I don't even feel like going over there. I don't feel like working on the temple. I don't feel like doing what God has asked me to do. I'm just going to do whatever I want to do, and I'm just going to let that go by the wayside. It had to be very disheartening. Not only was it discouraging, not only was it disheartening, but I bet it was difficult. I bet it was difficult. And really, I could have started with, with it being difficult. But I just want to say this difficulty difficulty usually brings about some kind of fruit if that butterfly doesn't fight pardon me if if, if the caterpillar doesn't fight to get out of that uh, pupa that it builds if it doesn't fight to get out of that cocoon it doesn't grow its wings right if you don't take care of that fruit tree for a season or two it's not going to produce fruit I don't care what it is If you want any good results, usually it requires some difficulty. And these people were building the temple back. They were working on the house of God. And you can bet that because there was going to be results, that the devil was going to make it as difficult as possible. 
and he did. They had weak hands. They had troubled hearts. They had they had they, they, they were just perplexed. They were distressed. They were bombarded on every side by these people who decided that they were just going to make life hard on them, and yet they went to work every day and continued the work on the house of God. I know it was discouraging. I know it was disheartening. I know it was difficult. To the discouragement, though, I want to say this in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of, of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, David had had done the thing and it left the, the, the city wide open and the Philistines came through and they kidnapped, they, they took all the wives and all the daughters and all the sons. They took them all and then, then whenever David came back with his men, they saw everything was gone. Everybody was mad at David and they wanted to kill him and David was distressed. Rightly so, he was distressed. But David took a minute and all that discouragement and all that, all that trouble and he encouraged himself not in his pride, not in his posture, not in his pomp, not in his circumstance, not in his wealth, not in his fame, not in his name, but he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. He wasn't looking for someone to come pat him on the back. He wasn't looking for someone to come around and just tell him how good he was. What David was looking for was he was looking for God himself to give him something to, to, to carry him through. And you know what? God did. Let me tell you something. I know it is discouraging to have to do virtual church. I know it is discouraging to have to sit in a parking lot. I know it is discouraging to see COVID cases go up. I know it is discouraging to see your family get sick. I know it is discouraging to find out you've got money trouble. I know it is discouraging to wonder where your next meal is going to come from, but I'm telling you that the Lord your God can encourage you if you will just let Him do it. They were discouraged, but I also said they were disheartened. And you know they were disheartened. I bet that you, you know, there wasn't, there, there, there wasn't a light-hearted atmosphere around there. You ever been to a, to a workplace or maybe just worked around a bunch of people that they laughed and cut up all day long. It makes the work so much easier. Uh, you know, just about every place I've worked, there's always somebody pulling some kind of joke here or there. And, and it may, makes a light atmosphere and it's easier to work. You don't get to beat down in your heart about everything. These guys were disheartened. And you know what happened was that, uh, that, that they, they probably didn't much care about joking around at work. They probably didn't much care about having a good time. They were disheartened. It had to be disheartening. In Job 35.10, the Bible says, But none saith, Where is God my Maker, which giveth songs in the night? You know it, and I know it, that there are uh, uh, times in your life when you go through troubles, and God is right there, and He will give you some praise right in the middle of, of the time that you're the most pitiful. You know and I know that right in the time when you've got the most sorrow, God can give you cause for celebration. You know and I know that right in the middle of your great grief, we have a great God who can give us the gift of praise and help us to be able to praise His name and lift His name up on high. That's what God does. And even though we might be disheartened, we have a God who can give us something in the midst of this. You can approach whatever's coming, whether it be uh, more COVID cases and us having to do virtual church or, or parking lot church for an extended period of time, or whether it be something like, um, you know, maybe you do have money trouble. Maybe you are looking for, for some kind of a meal because you don't have anything. Maybe you're lonesome. Maybe you're blue. Maybe you have sick family, whatever it is. You can approach that with the knowledge that in the middle of your darkest night, God is there, and if you'll let Him, He'll give you a song. If you're right there and you'll let Him, in that darkest part of your life, God will give you something to praise Him about. 
Don't ever think that God just leaves you high and dry. He doesn't. God wants to be there for you, wants to help you, wants to give you something to praise him about. It was discouraging. It was disheartening. But I said it was difficult. And you better believe it was difficult. Like I said, nothing that worth doing is easy. These guys are building the house of God. You know how much the devil fights you just to go to church? Can you imagine how much he fought them trying to rebuild the temple? The same temple that Jesus Christ himself said that he would tear down and rebuild in three days? I mean, this thing is central to Bible prophecy. This is central to the New Testament. This is central to the, to, you know, to, to the end times. And they're rebuilding it. And the devil, I'm sure, is fighting them tooth and nail and making things difficult. And, you know, I thought about that, and I thought about how it's difficult to have to worry about whether or not uh, I'm going to disenfranchise a whole group of people because I want to have church inside, or whether I'm going to disenfranchise a whole group of people because I want to have church outside. It's difficult to sit and, 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 and to wonder whether or not if we have church inside, this one's going to get sick, or if we have church outside, if this one's going to get frustrated and decide that they need to go somewhere else. It's frustrating and it's hard to, to, to deal with these things. It's hard whenever I get to work to have to make the decisions that I have to make concerning my job, just quality stuff. It's hard to be a parent. It's hard to, to work a job. It's hard to run a house. It's hard to be a wife. It's hard to be a husband. It's hard to be a child. It's hard to live in this world. This world is difficult. It's hard to go to church. It's hard to be a Christian. But I want you to know something in all of this difficulty. We have a God that delights in helping us take care of our problems. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, it says this, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to know this, that in all this difficult time that you have coming, I don't care if you're listening to this and you just stumbled across it and you're in the healthcare. care a business and you're out there dealing with COVID on the front lines and you're having to deal with the, the hurt and, and all that heartache and trouble and all the stuff that comes with it. If you're if, if it's difficult, you can go to the Lord and He'll He'll take your heavy burden off you and give you His burden which is light. If you're just dealing with the difficulty of not being able to go into God's house physically and sit down in a pew physically and worship God right there in, in, a, in a physical place, then you're dealing with that difficulty. I want you to know that if you'll take that burden to God, He'll take that burden from you and He'll give you one that's light. I want you to know that if you're dealing with the difficulty of having to make heavy decisions, that if you'll go to the Lord and you'll give Him that burden, He'll give one back to you that's lighter. I want you to know there's no difficulty too great for our God if we'll just take it to Him. My question is, where are you at tonight? Because these builders, every day they would go to work and every day the devil would fight with them and fuss with them and cause them trouble. They were discouraged. They were disheartened. It was difficult. But you know what? They got the work done. Because the same God that gave us these verses that I read to you about how that David encouraged himself in the Lord, about how that God gave the songs in the night, and about how that if you'll take your burden to God and you'll learn of him that he's meek and lowly in heart and he'll give you rest unto your souls they knew that God and that God provided all that for them and he'll provide it for you too if you ask him so my question is where are you at tonight what are you dealing with tonight what's going on in your world I'm just going to be as real as I can I deal with things every day. I deal with doubts. I deal with fears. I deal with troubles. I deal with trials. I deal with tribulations. I deal with, with stuff every day in my own life. I know you do too. My life is relatively, I'm not going to say it's the easiest life, but it's relatively easy. I don't have to fight for my food. I don't have to go dig a well to get water. I don't have to, to beat down somebody's door, you know, to, to find safety because I'm doing something illegal. My life is relatively easy, and I still have difficulty. I know there are people that may hear this that have more difficulty than I do. Let me tell you, you can find rest in the Lord. All you have to do is go looking for it. Hey, if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, today's the day of salvation. To my church people, I want you to know that you may have weak hands right now. You may have troubled hearts right now. There may be counselors on every side trying to give you bad advice and trying to push you the wrong direction. Hold on and let God work things out. 
that's all I've got for this evening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Lord will, and as soon as we can get back in the sanctuary, we will. But for right now, for safety's sake, we're going virtual tonight. We'll have parking lot church on Sunday if nothing changes. And uh, I'm telling you, with the way things are going at work, I don't know how long I'll be before or it'll be before I get quarantined. But I'm figuring it's going to happen. So y'all just pray us up. And we'll pray for you. We love you guys, and Lord willing, we'll see you soon.